close enough is no longer good enough. That's ESU Lockdown version 5's new catch cry. Does that mean they're getting harder and harder to program? I think not. I'm going to show you some quick tips on how to program your Lockdown 5's. I've spent a ton of time compiling an easy five-step approach on how to use this tech. In this video, I'll share with you the tips of programming a Locksound 5 decoder in 2023. Also, stick around to the end why I think learning this program will benefit every modeler. Let's get cracking. So let's first look at some of the tech that is required to do what we need to do to program these decoders. So the first thing we're gonna look at, and I will explain these more in detail as the video goes along. So the first thing we need is a lock programmer. So the lock programmer is the interface between the, the DCC decoder and the PC. So we can manipulate sounds, CVs, play with lighting and all the other functions on any other decoder. Another piece of tech we're gonna be looking at today is the decoder tester. Now, this is not necessarily actually needed. We just need a designated programming track, but the way I use the decoder tester is to do a lot of bench testing. So I'll do bench testing and I'll show you how we just simply plug in the decoder to the decoder. It's got a motor, a speaker, lighting functions and everything. So we can test it before we actually install it properly into the locomotive. Now we're primarily to, primarily we're talking about lock sound version five today, but this programmer can be used right back to version three and four if that's what you want to do. Step one. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go and find and download. We're going to go and find the file, the sound file for the ESU lock sound. So we're in the uh, the ESU website here. It's just a matter of going to downloads, which is along the top here, sound files. All right, so this is the obviously ESU's international site. So it's either got European sound files, which is what we won't look at, but we'll look at North American and Australian files today. Okay, so the particular type of locomotive I'm going to look at is the Alco 12 cylinder 251B. So we can just go in and have a look at all the different functions. So it's a good sort of ready reckoner to actually find out whether it's uh, how much work you might have to do in the back end and it's a good reference um, to know what what sound slots it's in volume cvs and also various other information here all right so what i'll try to what i'll try to do now is i always like to have a bit of a listen to the sound to see if it's sort of sort of what i'm after and sort of that rough outcome what you're going to get just be obviously mindful that your computer speakers or external speakers are going to be much more superior to what you're going to have in a locomotive. So but it's going to give you some sort of idea. So so that's obviously just the, the start up for it. Um, the whole file will go through, show you the bells, the horns, the, cup, the couplers and all the other the sounds. So from this point, it's a matter of going to the download and it's going to come up with some some general information about the licensing agreement which you've got to accept now depending on how you've got your computer set up um, it's just going to go into your downloads file all right so now we've downloaded all I've gone is to, to the show more tab or show all tab and then we'll go and see the file I'll just quickly bring that screen across and here's the file here so at this point i always like to put it into a folder as what i'm going to call a root file not in the true sense of a root file with pc but i like to have a file that is has no alterations to it it's just purely the file as downloaded so it's a matter of what you want to how you want to use the if you're putting it in, depending on what type of diesel locomotive you're putting in, I'm putting in a South Australian Railways 930 class. Um, and that's the, the what the, the closest SAM file that I've got. So at this point, you can either drag and drop, cut and paste. So what I've done is for this project, I've just got it sitting in here. And I've changed the name to it, what it's going to be. Um, when you do set up, so at this point, this is now where we'll go across to the interface and we'll upload the file to the decoder. Okay, so I've booted up the software. This is the first screen we're going to get to. So there's various options here. 
So we can just modify the settings. So that, that's a, a place to start after you've done your sound files. Then you've got a complete decoder upgrade, which is what we're going to look at doing and create a new, a new project. This is more used for the users that have maybe downloaded their own or recorded their own sound files and they want to upload them into the decoder or open existing project, which is uh, self-explanatory. So what we're going to do, we're going to go and perform complete decoder upgrade. So it's just a matter of going finding saved the project to, or the sound file, I should say. So here's ours here, which is the Alco 12251B. So it's just a matter of going to open it. So now we're going to open the project. So it's going to go through uh, various screens here, writing up the firmware and the like. What we're going to show here is some sort of feedback you're going to get to know that information is going up onto your up onto your decoder. So the first one I'm going to show you to is actually on the lock programmer itself. So on the sort of the right hand side here, you'll see this little dancing LED. So that's uh, suggesting that it track a uh, part of the track, and also if it's sort of flashing a green color, you know that the data is coming into the actual lock programmer. Now, depending on the, the RS-232 that you've got, the serial USB to serial adapter, it could be, mine's actually got um, some some dancing lights here to show that the, there's a two-way information going in and out of, of the decoder. So the other one you can look at, if you've got, if you've got the ESU decoder tester, you can also see where the input comes in for the, for the track side of things you'll see a little dancing LED there also. So if you've got the decoder installed in your locomotive, you know that normally what will happen, sometimes the, you'll hear the motor dancing around, just gone, you know, just, just cycling a little bit. It won't actually be enough to move the locomotive, but you actually hear the motor within the, the actual locomotive um, activating. Step two. So what you'll see on the screen here, after the program's downloaded, it just comes back to this this um, generic screen with the decoder tab showing. Now, at this point, I'm not sure why they haven't done this, but lock sound, there's no way to know that you've, that you've had an error-free upload of the sound. So the first thing I always do before, the first thing I always do before I touch any of the, the CVs on a decoder, I just normally just go over to the driver tab and I'll just have a play around with the sound. So I will, so the few things I just wanted to obviously get the motor, just make sure the motor's working and some of the sounds and the lighting's working correctly. So it's just a matter of going up to the top here, you go go, and you got the slider here, put it in forward motion. And we'll now go over to the footage of the decoder tester. We'll go, the light is on. which is the forward facing light, which is there. We'll put the sounds on. So what I'll do, I'll just get the, the speaker nice and close, or sorry, the microphone nice and close, just so you can hear this, the beautiful sound of these things. So now I know that the sound has downloaded properly. So we'll get out of the cab driver and we'll look at the other settings that we'll get into. Step three. So what I like most about the lock programmer interface is it's it's a very visual thing. So it's one of the reasons why I went out and purchased the lock programmer hardware. It is only for ESU decoders to upload sounds and the like, but I just like the way you can manipulate all of the CVs in a very visual way. So what we're going to do now, we're going to have a very, very quick dive into the programmer and just, we'll just flick through some of the main sort of parameters that you might change. And then I'll, later on this video, I'll dive further into how I look at doing those. So, so the first one will be the DCC setting. So if you're running um, any Railcom de uh, occup occupancy detection um, in programs like JMRI, um, iTrain or Train Controller, that will feed back uh, in a particular locomotive description or serial number, which you can actually set further in here. Um, I don't change any other of these. Ones I might look at changing is using 
within the speed steps, 128 or 28 to 128 speed steps. Now the next one we will dive into a little bit further is just driving characteristics where we can do trimmings um, and and the like. Function mapping I will go into a lot further because depending on how you want to set up your function mapping, I have all my, if you want to have all your locomotives all the same, so when your operators come along they know what's what. So I do change things around a little bit there. And depending on the decoder type, we can rename and play around with the, the function outputs. And we've got the function settings here. So the function settings will be along the lines of potentially we start doing, if we're going to do blinking like effects with, we've got frequencies, um, grade crossing holding times, and fade in, fade out type things. And also whether we're going to be using we can actually put sensors on the locomotive. Um, this one is obviously tick for a, a digital wheel sensor. I don't use either of those. And at this point, what we can also do is what what random sounds. So we can actually play around, and I won't do this because I normally like what ESU have already done. So we can actually play around with the random sounds, um, what's coming on at any given time, whether it's during a stop motor drive or the other one option here is only play when the driving sound is enabled. So if you're a little more old school and you're into binary, um, you can actually set the individual manually um, input the CVs here. The motor settings will go into a little more detail, the two different versions, um, the three, three value option or the more linear uh, speed curve. Smoke units, uh, not relevant for a diesel locomotive, but obviously for our steam fans out there. Um, sound settings, we can go into a little bit more. Um, I don't necessarily play around a lot with this even with my steam locomotives what i do i i like to play around with the upper volume because i just think it's a little bit too loud um the sound slots i won't dive into too much about um, you can actually go and play with the individual sound slots and how loud they are and also where they might uh, come in on different speed steps as i said i haven't yet to have a real good play around with that side of things so also you've got an information section, so you can use it a little as a bit of a an inventory, I suppose, of what uh, with for your decoders. You can actually upload images and all the descriptions and the like. Something I don't do. I use a, a separate program for my inventory, but it is an option there. And this last section I've never used, but my understanding of what it's used for. There's obviously this this program is quite powerful and has the facility to where. A modeler can actually go and record or source their own sounds of locomotives and this is how they can actually make sound what would you call it um, they can actually make their own sound projects so this is what this what this is doing um, yes you have their own sort of sound templates as well over on the right hand side here where you can actually go and have a play around um, obviously very generic sounds but there are some modelers out there they're actually if they don't they want the exact sound of a locomotive so they'll go and record them or source the recording this is where you do that let's get into step four after a word from my sponsor pcbway this video is proudly sponsored by pcbway.com if you're a tinkerer inventor or an advanced electrical engineer pcbway have you covered or you are seriously missing out. They are passionate about PCBs, but PCB Way do not stop there. They also offer 3D print, injection molding or CNC machining, assembly or basic PCB manufacturing. They can do it all for a very competitive price. Check out their awesome services in the link below and also a special offer to anyone who supports my channel. So after we've tested the installation into the locomotive or you've just tested on the decoder tested by ESU, the first thing we need to start looking at now is logically programming this decoder how we want to actually how we actually want to use it. So the first thing I always then start to look at, so I've got in the decoder tab here, I'll then look at what address am I going to give this locomotive. So I'm not going to go into how or why you might address something in a certain way, but I use either the last three or four digits of the road number. So on this occasion, I'll be using the long address option and it's 955. So this is gonna be the first step of what I'm gonna call of the new file save. And what I mean by that is at this point, we'll set up a new file on our, wherever you're gonna save it on your computer via the save as option 
and it's just a matter of going finding the 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 location where you're going to save this file. Now I've got mine here, so I've got two files now saved. I've got the one we've downloaded, which hasn't been altered, and then we've got the 930. Why do I do that? Is because if we, for some reason, muck up badly and we sort of get ourselves all muddled up where we actually are in programming this decoder, we can always go back to that and re-upload. It's just a lot easier, trust me, than trying to reset decoders and the like. So at this point, um, normally the way I will do it, if you go through these tabs here and you finish the tab, you don't want any more information to change on this, you'll then go and push the right decoder button and it'll ask you whether you're updating main track uh, programming on the main, which I'm not, I'm doing it on a, in the decoder, on the decoder tester, or you got a programming track, you can do it that way and it's going to overwrite the defaults. So it's just a matter of pushing OK, and it'll write to the coder. And that now should, if we quickly go back over to our test, you can see we've now changed, it's changed the address to 955. We can give that a quick test if that's what you want to do. So what we'll do is we'll go and start looking at mapping the functions, because that, that can be a bit that take, can pay, take a little bit of time, and it can be a little bit confusing. So. I'll give you a little tip here. What I suggest to do is before you change any of the functions, you take a little snipping view of the actual functions before you start changing around. Because what you find is, because when it says restore default functions, what I'm finding is that when you save it, it's only going to go back to the last saved spot. So what I mean by that is if you change all these and then save it, it's not going to go back to the way it's looking now. So I haven't changed any of these. So it's a matter of you bring up your snipping tool if you're in Windows, go new, and then I'll just take a little snipping and I'll save that away and I'll have that as a ready rec now if I, if I so need to change um, any of the, the, the function mapping back to, to what I needed to do. So it's depending on how you want to run this. So I don't, I don't change any of the, the, the lighting. I always like the lights being here, so that's function function zero. Now, there's a few things that I don't use um, within. So my locomotives in my part of the world, they don't use the bell. So function one for me is nothing. So how I look at doing it, I like my sounds on function one and then my horn on function two and then others from there, so on and so forth. All right, so quickly what we'll do, we'll go in and change um, F8 function because uh, that's obviously was initially going to be well, stock out of the box. That is the to turn the, the sound on and off effectively, but I want to make it into my coupler. So what I'm going to do is, so it's just a matter of, so you can actually choose what you want to do. So you actually want to go and turn the function on to start with. Um, it's not dependent on driving or a direction, so we don't need to put a condition as as such on the function. So at this point, it's just a matter of going finding the correct sl sound slot for the coupler, which is sound slot number five. Then we work our way across. We then go and write data to the decoder, and we're going to do its few thing, uh, do its thing, and a few seconds later, it should be now the the coupler. So, sorry, just let me, bit of an error there. So just got to make sure if you're going to change them around that if you you can actually have two sound slots in on the one function. So what I did there is the function eight, I was playing around before and that was the handbrake wheel. So I would have done the coupler and the handbrake wheel. So that's um, something to be mindful of. So I would now go across to, we'll go across to the driver's cab and we'll push function eight. I will go and quickly show you the handbrake that I initially had on there. So disconnect sound slot five, and we want to connect uh, slot number 14, sound slot 14, which is the handbrake. So it's a matter of uploading, writing to the, the decoder, does its thing, it's uploaded. We'll go over to the driver's cab, function eight again. We'll go to turn the system on, and we'll go across to 
the little speaker with the microphone and we'll have a listen to the break. So that's it done. So we'll just quickly go back into the function map, so to speak. So now what you can actually do from here, if you're changing wholesalely, say you wanted to go from function 14, which is the handbrake wheel, which is what I had, um, you can either do it the way I did it, but you can also push them up the line as well and change the order of them. And then it's just a matter of changing the function number that way also. I find that can get a little bit, you get a little bit muddled doing it that way. So I sort of do it, um, go in and change the function with the sound slot, not just um, lifting it up and down with the, the direction tool here or the moving tool. Step number five. So we're out in the, the layout room of the Fulham Log Railway. So this is the, the locomotive in question here, the South Australian Railway's 930 class. So just going to show you the, the speed ramp on it. So this is just as the uh, the speed curve or lack thereof, a very linear straight line um, straight out of the box. So as soon as you go up, that's... So that's just flat out. It's just sort of no speed up or slow down just very stop start so what we'll do we'll go and have a play around with a bit of a speed curve and we'll, uh, we'll see what that looks like for a little more realism so we're now back in the lock programmer so the the values you saw on the locomotive on the footage is pretty well just using the th that cv's two five and six uh five being the the maximum and two being the start voltage or the lowest uh, lower speed and five being the mid speed that's obviously very linear so you can actually play around with that if that's what you want to do um, to get a little bit slower start but most modelers will probably want to go to use the speed curve so the speed curve obviously that's the linear the curve you can actually go into these individually and pull them down um, but i find that a little bit problematic so what you can actually do you can go over to these presets and so we've got linear linear now, exponential is quite nice, so you can play with the top speed, which is obviously the the, the CV five. We can bring this, we can bring this back to a to a lower top speed, and then you can play with your speed curve at that. So there's different. Uh, that's obviously a real slow startup, and then a real intense sort of mid range up to its high uh, top speed. But I sort of like using sort of that exponential number one and that sort of works for me. So we might just knock that back a little bit. And what we'll do, we will uh, program that up and I'll take you back over to the layout room and we'll show you what that looks like. So as you can see, the locomotive takes a lot longer to get up to its top speed. And similarly, coming off the back end, takes a while to also slow down. So it's much more prototypical. You can obviously play around with that a lot more depending on what your desired tastes are and what prototypes you might be modeling. And also you can actually, if it's like a, if it's a unit train, you could probably set it up in a way that it, uh, has a lot, simulates more the, the load, so it's gonna take a lot longer to, to start off just purely because of the weight of the locomotive. Now, I use train controller, so I set mine pretty well to linear, purely because my my software actually controls the trains, the, the stopping and the, the starting of them. Earlier in the video, I pointed out to stick around the end to say why I think modelers should learn the lock programmer. Why should you learn this program? So the, the big things I can see here, we've got 255 CVs in a DCC decoder to master via a controller if you want to start getting into the infinite detail of customising your locomotives. Now, the big plus for the lock program, it's obviously a very visual thing. So we can actually see visually what, we're at, what settings are actually changing. And I find that, from my point of view, a very easy concept to grasp so if you want to comment below if that's something that you would look at also yes i appreciate it is a cost compared to dakota pro but it's a one-stop shop so what i mean by that is you're uploading the sounds with the one program and you're playing and manipulating all the cvs to customize your locomotive all in the one program so i'm really interested in people's perception or what they think below of the lock program do, do you use it are you considering using it or is it something it's just too expensive uh, please comment below. 
Well, that's the end of the video. So thanks for watching and I'll see you again in a few weeks. Make sure you subscribe. Click that little bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos. Support us on Patreon. Like us on Facebook and Instagram at Model Railroad Techniques.